This one will blow your mind. Hart, Rush, and the Doobie Brothers at a high school in Erie, Pennsylvania. The House of the Rising Sun. Um, you'd think the guy would have taught me an easier song, but all part of the, the journey. You go, uh, I love the song, I love the, the Eric's voice, uh, their rendition of it. And he's showing me the chords, and I half asked, practiced during the week, went back to second week. I didn't really know it. He showed it to me again. I half asked, practiced, came back to third week. And the guy said, Don't waste my time. If you don't have your act together next week, don't ever come back again. And I, I, I got it. He slapped me down. I learned the song. I can play it for you now. Uh, uh, you know, I've sung with Eric Burden since. It was a, an important seminal moment in my life. Runaway. I went to a radio station that was so brand new that it didn't have a receptionist. And this again was just blind luck. And the DJ saw me through the window of the booth and you know, sort of gave me the finger and said, wait. And he came out on a break and I explained that I've got this song and a bunch more. What do you think? He said, wait till after my shift and told me they were doing a homegrown record and it was gonna be you know, in New York City. And he heard Runaway and he goes, you know that's a hit song? And I said, I know, tell someone else. <laughs> and, and they started to play it on the radio in New York before I had a band, before managers, record deals, anything. It was me knocking on a DJ's window and a guy named Chip Hobart who answered my prayer. And so, you know, hearing it on the radio that first time, you wanted to get pulled over by the cops because you wanted to go point at the radio and go, that's me on the radio. Yeah. First albums were probably those k -Tel compilations they used to have, you know, Tony Orlando and Dawn and, and things like that. And uh, Three Dog Night, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> but when I first started getting into having independent thought, whether it was that mid to latter 70s, Alice Cooper, Aerosmith's first album, but I remember, again, an important moment for me was buying Bob Dylan's Desire, because the song Hurricane was about a guy that was in jail in New Jersey, and once a year you would have to go with your parents to the place to get your car inspected, and it was right outside the prison gates. And you would go, in there is the guy, on here, and this is the words. And when I put all that together, I was like, huh, this is very important, you know? And so that, that album had a huge impact on me. The first band I was in that was making noise was called Raze, R-A-Z-E. I remember the highlight of our career was playing a talent show in which we came in second place. We didn't win. <laughs> But then the Atlantic City Expressway was formed shortly thereafter, and that was my first, you know, block dance, high school dance, frat party, uh, bar, in the Expressway until I, I then quit my own band, and it, you know, kept going from there. Well, that talent show, if I can count that, um, 77? So 78, the expressway was already together. By 79, we were, we were as far as playing bars and I, I wasn't old enough. Because um, the drinking age was 18 in New Jersey and that of course was also very important in, in creating me. And, I, and I'm not saying that as a wise guy. If you were 16 and 17, you could pretend to be 18. There weren't photo IDs back then. You had a paper license. You, you sort of looked old enough, they'd let you play. And that was very important because I didn't have any huge responsibilities and I wasn't going to college yet, I was still in high school. So because it was so formative for me to be in Asbury as a member of someone else's band playing original music, I knew what the road was and I was just turned 18. I graduated high school and you know we were there. Billy Squire produced the first demo I ever did.
As an extra, I was shot by the Young Guns cast, which led me to write Plays of Glory. Um, but my first, you know, then I started to study the craft of acting, and two years later, my first movie role was in Moonlight and Valentino with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and Liz Perkins, Whoopi Goldberg, and Kathleen Turner. So that was the first of 12 movies that I, I was in. Uh, it was great. It was, in, you know, again, an important part of my life and my career. Movies influenced that next chapter. Always, I had written for a movie. You know, I had written for a movie called Romeo is Bleeding. I just didn't give him the song. 18 million copies of that record later. You know, that was a monster song. Uh, so movies were very important to my, to my writing and, and my growth and the band's growth. This is an album of we, the people. Bon Jovi 2020. Stories are personal and yet they're universal. Performed live in its entirety. We're here. You're there. The broadcast premiere of On a Night Like This, Bon Jovi 2020. And don't miss the exclusive pre-show. Access TV presents A Conversation with John Bon Jovi. Hosted by Allison Hagendorf. Bon Jovi 2020. Saturday, March 20th. Starting at 8. Go to access.tv or download the app for additional Bon Jovi content.